Hi, in this video, let me show you around the data transformation capabilities of Hevo. Before I dive in, let me tell you a little bit about the need for data transformations. Typically, the data stored in source systems aren't structured in a way that's suitable for analysis. You will need to clean and enrich this data to make it ready for analysis. Let me give you a few examples to explain what I mean. Your transactional data might be stored in a NoSQL database like MongoDB. In such cases, you'll have to convert the JSON object into a relational database with rows and columns. Only then will you be able to analyze the data. What if you want to filter only a handful of events, or move only some of the data into your warehouse? For example, you may want to analyze data of only the users born after 1950. Transformations come in handy in such cases. You can use transformations to anonymize sensitive information before loading it into the warehouse. For example, details like customers' phone numbers or email IDs might have to be masked before making the data accessible to your business users. You can use transformations to map data from different sources to a common definition. In a hypothetical scenario, assume that you have two product catalogs that store product data in two different conventions. They store the author names differently, one stores the price in pounds, and the other in dollars. Transformations can help you deal with this inconsistency. In a nutshell, data transformation is a must for robust and efficient data analysis. They help you do more with your data, which is why we have built the transformations feature on Hevo. You can easily clean, filter, transform, and enrich both structured and unstructured data on the fly through a simple Python coding interface on Hevo. Let me show you how each of the use cases that we just discussed can be dealt with using Hevo's transformation feature. Once you create a data pipeline to move your data from any source to a destination on Hevo, you can write custom Python scripts to transform and enrich the incoming data in real time. Let me show you how by creating a MongoDB data pipeline. I will click Create Pipeline. I'll select my source, that's MongoDB in this case. You can configure a new source or load the settings from an existing database. I'll choose an existing MongoDB source. There are multiple options on how you can extract your data. You can simply copy collections or extract data using Oplog. I'm going to select the collections. Let me load all the collections available here. Next, let me select the destination. This is where I want all my MongoDB data to be stored. I will choose AWS Redshift. My MongoDB pipeline is created. In a few minutes, you'll start seeing the data stream from MongoDB to Redshift. You can also refer to the link provided in the description for step-by-step -step guidance on how to create a pipeline on Hevo. Let me show you a sample incoming event. An event is a single incoming data set. In MongoDB, a single document in a collection is an event. Similarly, a single row in MySQL is an event. The MongoDB source in this example holds the data for various restaurants in a city. It has the name, address, cuisine, and grading for restaurants. This object or event that we are looking at has a variety of data types, nested objects, arrays, etc. Hevo automatically converts nested objects into relational data. Let me show this to you through the schema mapper. As you can see, Hevo automatically detects your tables and schema. Observe how Hevo has converted nested, unstructured data into relational data. Hevo automatically proposes the data types to which the source schema is to be mapped, so that you don't have to do it all manually. Let me show you how to split the incoming JSON event into multiple events. We are now on the Transformations page. Like I mentioned before, a complete Python environment is available for you to write your own logic to transform the data on Hevo. You can also deploy your own custom Python libraries if need be. Let me add a script to split the incoming restaurants event to hold just the details of the restaurant, its cuisine, and zip code. With the preview window, you can test the transformation on a sample event before deploying it to your warehouse. This helps you ensure that the right output is written to the destination. If you make any errors in the transformation script itself, you're notified of that right there. 
Let's say you make a small error in writing the function name. When you test, you're notified of the error so that you can fix the code instantly before deployment. Let me fix this code and test it again. And there you go. Note that once you deploy the transformation, it'll be applied to all the future incoming events as they move from source to destination. Let me hit Deploy. Let's see how this change is reflected on the schema mapper. Only the transformed schema is shown. The additional information like grading, etc., that were present in the earlier schema have not been included. You can now map this to a destination table on Redshift with just a click of the button. I'll click on Create Mapping, and voila, the event has been mapped to the destination. If any exceptions arise while processing an event, like the source or destination not being available, or an error in the transformation code, all such events are parked in a separate staging area called the replay queue. You get notified about this over email and Slack. You can get the details of the exception and see a sample incoming event to investigate further. Once you fix the issues, you can reprocess just these events from the replay queue, thus ensuring zero data loss. Let me now show you how to write transformations for a few other use cases. What if you want to filter only a handful of events, or parts of incoming data? You can do this easily with Hevo's transformations. This pipeline moves data on tennis players from Google Drive into a Redshift data warehouse. Let me show you a sample event. The event contains the name, nationality, phone number, and year of birth for each player. Let me go to the transformations. I've added a simple Python code to filter the players based on their year of birth. Let's test this. Since the user Rod was born in 1938, his data will not be loaded. Let's test this with another event. Since John was born after 1950, his data will be loaded into the warehouse. Once I hit Deploy, this transformation will be applied across all the future incoming events in this pipeline. Next, let me show you how to mask sensitive information before moving it to your warehouse. You can mask any sensitive property like email ID, phone number, etc. This event already contains the phone number of a tennis player. Let me add a piece of code to mask the phone number here. Let's test the code. And there you go, the phone number has been masked. In a similar fashion, you can write your own code to anonymize any information before loading it into the warehouse. Easy, isn't it? Let's talk about another use case now. Let's say that you have an online bookstore. Two different suppliers that you work with have two different conventions for storing the product details in the product catalog. For example, supplier A stores the name as product name and price in dollars. Supplier B stores a complete name and its price in pounds. Let me show you how to convert this into a common data definition using Hevo. As you can see, I've created two different pipelines that pull the data from supplier A and B from Google Drive and loaded it to common storage on Redshift. Let's add a transformation to map the data from supplier A. Here I've added a code snippet to combine the author and product name fields to create a single field product name. The price is recorded in dollars. Additionally, I have added the source field that holds the name of the supplier. This will help me identify the source of the event and the destination. Let's test this event to ensure that the transformation works correctly. The transformation looks great. Let me go to the second pipeline and include a transformation there too. Here I've added a script to convert the name to product underscore name and product price from pounds to dollars. Similar to the transformation on data from supplier A, this script also stores the source from which the data has been extracted. Let's test this. Price has changed from pounds to dollars, and the complete name is changed to product name. Great! Once I deploy, all the future incoming events will be mapped using the same definition. In a similar fashion, you can write transformations to clean and enrich any data on Hevo. The possibilities are limitless.
If you have any queries, feel free to shoot us an email at try at hevodata.com or sign up for a free trial with us on www.hevodata.com. Thank you.